Hello, I'm Mr. Ropes. Who are Hi. you? I'm super really good, the curator here at the Penobscot Marine Museum. Hmm, it's nice to meet you. Sounds interesting. Wait, what's a curator? Oh, I care for the objects and know where everything is on exhibit and in storage. And like a good investigative reporter, I need to know who, what, where, why, when, and how the objects and archives were made. I help researchers answer, answer questions and make the exhibits. Wow, cool. What's your favorite part about being a curator? Oh, I love finding interesting stories about the people who made and used the objects at sea and at home and hearing our interpreters and our cats tell all the fascinating stories. I spent many years sailing with Searsport captains and I heard a bunch of great stories. I actually made a puppet show about a Captain William McGillory Carver and the Susan Gilmore. That's one of my favorite stories. I based it off an article in the Sydney Morning Herald published on July 5th, 1884. Here it is. The American ship Susan Gilmore, 1204 tons, Captain Carver, went ashore last night under the rocks near Shepherd's Hill, Australia. Captain Carver reports that Susan Gilmore left Sydney with a crew of 14 hands on Wednesday night at 11 o'clock. The glass then was high, but the weather showery. She was bound to Newcastle for coal. The ship stranded at about 11 o'clock on Thursday night. At about midnight, one boat was launched, but it was sucked under the ship and destroyed. At daylight on Friday morning, another boat was launched, but the sea filled her alongside. The third boat then put off immediately afterwards and succeeded in successfully landing seven of the crew in two trips. On the third trip, the boat, like the others, filled alongside. The captain then had to swim ashore. Being very nearly carried away and had a hard struggle to reach land. But he pulled a rope behind him. Shortly after this, the rocket brigade appeared. A line had already been conveyed from the ship by the captain, by which the life-saving lines were hauled aboard. The captain and the brigade sent the breeches buoy to the ship. They successfully rescued a crew member. The captain and the brigade sent the breeches buoy back to the ship. They successfully rescued a crew member and another crew member. The captain and the brigade sent the breeches buoy back to the ship. They successfully rescued a crew member and another crew member and the captain's wife. The captain and the brigade sent the breeches buoy back to the ship.
They successfully rescued a crew member, another crew member, the captain's wife, and the captain's son. The captain and the brigade sent the breeches buoy back to the ship. They successfully rescued a crew member, another crew member, the captain's wife, the captain's son, and the dog. The captain and the brigade sent the breeches buoy back to the ship. They successfully rescued a crew member, another crew member, the captain's wife, the captain's son, the dog, and the cat. The captain and the brigade sent the breeches buoy back to the ship. They successfully rescued a crew member, another crew member, the captain's wife, the captain's son, the dog, the cat, and the pet canary. The captain and the brigade sent the breeches buoy back to the ship. They successfully rescued a crew member, another crew member, the captain's wife, the captain's son, the dog, the cat, the pet canary, and the hippopotamus. The crew were brought to the sailor's home, and Captain Carver, Mrs. Carver, and son were invited on board the bark escort by Captain Waterhouse from Boston who was related to Captain Carver's family. All are now being hospitably entertained on board that vessel. Neither Mrs. Carver nor child have sustained any physical injury through the disaster. The Susan Gilmore is now lying where she's stranded. story, but I don't remember a hippopotamus in the version I read. <laughs> yeah, I thought it would be fun to add in that part, but all the rest is true. And you know, the pets didn't ride in the breeches buoy alone. Captain Carver went back to the ship and carried them to shore in the breeches buoy. Yes. That makes sense, but it's fun to imagine the animals going for a ride. I do have a question for you though. Yes. The article I read said the rocket brigade arrived to assist with the rescue. What's the rocket brigade? The rocket brigade was Australia's version of the United States Life Saving Service, which later became the US Coast Guard. The rocket brigade rescued people off ships in trouble by shooting a rocket with a sh rope attached to it over the ship. Would you like to see a video I made about our rocket? Yeah. Here's an example of what the rocket guard used. Here in the U.S. we called it a Lyle gun. But you can see the cannon there and then the projectile here that went into the cannon. So the projectile would go into the cannon and they would shoot it off and it would go out to the ship carrying the rope with it and they would catch on the ship and tie it to the mast and that's how they set up the breeches buoy from shore. So there you go. Wow, so that little rope on the end of the rocket, you would tie a larger one to it. And can you imagine that projectile shooting onto the ship? You'd have to stand clear. And the crew would scurry up and tie the rope around the mast. And of course, the other end of the rope was back on shore. And they'd rig up the breeches buoy and everyone, like you saw, would go to shore in the breeches buoy. And it was like a buoy with a pair of pants in it. Very funny.
<laughs> Thanks, Zipperly. That's really helpful. And thank you for joining us today. And to all of you watching, thanks for joining us and come back next week for one more puppet show.